Hello, this is Bob Milam from the Utah High School Football Officials Association, the Salt Lake Chapter. Today's discussion focuses on free kicks, and there's a lot more going on here than you might think, so we're going to spend a few minutes to talk about free kicks. The big picture, and specifically what we'll talk about today, is this. We'll cover the background and definition of the free kick, the different types of free kicks, and yes, there's actually three different kinds, each treated differently by the rules. We'll talk about free kick formation and timing. We'll also talk about blocking and contact restrictions with other players and the ball. We'll talk about some other considerations to take into account during free kicks, penalties and options that occur during free kicks, the mechanics of free kicks will refer you where to go to find those in the mechanics manual and finally sum everything up. So let's get started. The background and definitions of free kicks we'll cover first. But if you learn nothing else today, learn this. Study in the rule book when a free kick ends. Learn this. It's in Rule 224.2, also in the fundamentals section at the end of the rule book. So learn this part really well. Now, a free kick is usually a kickoff, but not always. And it, kickoff is a term that's become so generic in today's society that it's now a verb, meaning to start. The definitions can be found here in the rule book on page 32 and 33, and in the handbook. That's that green book that you got this year on pages 51 to 53. Other than by snap, this is the only way to put a ball into play, is via the free kick. A free kick may be recovered by Team K under certain conditions, and differing, there's a lot of differences between free and scrimmage kicks. We'll be covering scrimmage kicks in other sessions, but today we're going to talk solely about free kicks. So let's start with the definition. A free kick starts a free kick down, like a kickoff. Kickoffs are a free kick which either starts a half, occurs after a successful field goal, or after any try. There are two other kinds of free kicks that are not kickoffs. These occur after a safety and after a fair catch or an awarded fair catch. During all free kicks, the ball must be either place kicked or drop kicked, but it can be punted on a free kick, but only after a safety. Free kick formations and timing. Now we're going to skip ahead to rule 6-1 in your rule book, and we're going to look at that. The ball must be placed between the inbounds marks. The inbounds marks are more formally known as the, or familiarly known as hash marks. All the K players must be behind their free kick line, except for the kicker, and if there is a holder, the holder. They may extend beyond the free kick line. The neutral zone for all free kicks is 10 yards wide. This is found in Rule 228-1. No K players can be more than five yards behind K's kick line, except the kicker. This is the new rule that was instituted in 2018. When the ball is kicked, at least four K players must be on each side of the kicker. Again, instituted in 2018, this is called by the referee in a five-man mechanic. Any R player may catch and recover and advance the ball on a free kick. K, the kick may be fair caught by R as well, and the clock will start when the ball is touched, other than first touching by K. This can be found in Rule 341A. Let's talk for a moment or two about blocking and contact restrictions, and we're going to start with Team K. We're going to talk about two of them to begin with. First, the ball must touch the ground or an R player, or it's kick-catch interference. Secondly, the ball must travel 10 yards or be touched by R in the neutral zone, or it's first touching. So if the ball does not touch the ground or an R player and K touches it, it's kick-catch interference. If the ball doesn't travel 10 yards or touched by R in the neutral zone, 
it's first touching and deserves a bean bag. Now, first touching is ignored if R's action causes K to touch the ball first. There are three blocking restrictions found in Rule 937. K can't block until the kick ta travels 10 yards or the kicking team is eligible to recover the kick or the receiving team initiates a block in the neutral zone. Until one of these three things happens, K cannot block. If they do, it's an illegal block with a 10-yard penalty. For Team R, there's a couple of restrictions relating to when they can block the kicker or holder. These are found in Rule 934. They have two of them. R may not block the kicker or holder until the kicker has advanced at least five yards beyond his free kick line or the kick has touched the ground or any other player. Then blocks may be initiated against the kicker or holder. You need to learn these specific blocking restrictions and contact restrictions for free kicks for both Team K and Team R. Some other considerations. The ball is dead when all the normal stuff happens, as in Rule 4-2. But it's also dead when K recovers or catches the kick anywhere. K may not advance. And remember, if K catches the kick, we will have kick-catch interference unless it's touched first by R. Any kick that's not a scoring attempt that breaks the plane of R's goal line causes the ball to become dead. The ball is also dead following any valid fair catch beyond, in, or behind the neutral zone, or the ball comes to rest with no player in possession or joint possession, in which case that goes to R. A free kick can score only after a fair catch or an awarded fair catch. Then the field goal comes into play. A free kick out of bounds, untouched by R, is a foul. And we'll go over what the options are here in a moment. Post-possession fouls by R negates any first touching by K. So if we have a first touching by K and R later commits a foul, that foul overrides the beanbag. Now let's look at penalties and options that occur during free kicks. There's two types of fouls that occur during the free kick. The first one are the pre-kick dead ball fouls. This is encroachment by either team or free kick formation fouls by K. Also pop-up kicks are dead ball fouls. Next, live ball fouls before the end of the kick by K. This are, these are fouls like free kick out of bounds, illegal contact in the neutral zone, and most other fouls. These are handled via the new option that was put in place last year, which is a succeeding spot option if the foul is by K during the kick and is not kick-catch interference. There's been no change to the rule for kick-catch interference. So we add the succeeding spot option if the foul that occurs meets this criteria here. Live ball foul before the end of the kick by K. Post kick fouls, meaning after possession has been gained by R and the ball is still live, there is no change. Those fouls are treated as fouls during a running play or if during a fumble during the loose ball. The penalties and options also cover the pop-up kick. This is another new rule that was added in 2017 to protect the vulnerable R players. And this pictogram will go along with the definition which is found in page 33 of your rule book. And you can see exactly what the Federation is trying to prevent here, which is an assault on a player who is waiting for the ball to come down. Now, the primary coverage area for the pop-up kick will be as follows. The back judge will have primary coverage and the line judge secondary coverage in a, in a five-man mechanic. This is a dead ball foul. The signal is given by the back judge following the enforcer prior to the march off of the yardage using signal 19. 
Now there are three types of mechanics that we'll use on free kicks. First, for a kickoff. This is found in the mechanics book on pages 24 to 27 for a five-man crew. Please look this one over as well as the mechanics for an anticipated onside kick, which shortens all of the, all of the coverage areas up. Also found on page 24 to 27. Finally, if it's a kick following an awarded fair catch, there's a special mechanic which is found on page 28. This one, however, is rare. We're not going to see this very often. So study pages 24 to 27 in your mechanics book. Well, let's summarize what we've covered here today. A free kick differs greatly from a scrimmage kick, mainly by the way it's put in play and a lot of other factors that we covered today. A free kick is usually a kickoff, but not necessarily so. All free kicks will have a 10-yard neutral zone as opposed to the type of neutral zone that we have during a snap, which is the length of the ball. Make sure that you know when the kick begins and when it ends. This is critical to enforcing the penalties and to the other restrictions that apply during a free kick. Free kicks can be recovered by K under certain conditions. They cannot be caught by K. Review when first touching and kick catch interference will apply. So go look at those rules as we mentioned in the presentation. Review the blocking and contact restrictions. Remember, the ball is dead when non-scoring kicks break the plane of R's goal line. Then learn the new penalty options from 2018 and how to apply and administer them correctly. Call the pop-up kicks correctly. And finally, review the three sets of mechanics. That does it for our presentation today. Any questions, please reach out to me and contact me. Have a great season.